tails and rails for hip internal rotation, a very high value motion. So you need to get something underneath your knee to raise it up into your end range of internal rotation. We're gonna snug it up by taking the pelvis and we're gonna roll that hip forwards. AFIR, we're getting internal rotation on that bottom hip. You also want to bring attention to the position of your rib cage. Always get that pelvis and rib cage stacked, not disconnected. And I want you to go into a little bit of side bending, lifting the ribs up to get the lower abs. I'm at my end range. So I'm going to hang out here and just breathe. Take a few moments and make sure I'm at end range. And then I'm going to apply pails. Pails is an isometric effort, so there's no movement at your end range. It's to teach your brain, build cortical representation of this movement so that you can use it. Mobility is about usable ranges of motion, not these temporary feel-good moments that we get from passive stretching. So now that we're in this nice line of tension, we apply the pails. The pails is going to be that knee driving down into the block. It is a 10 second effort and it is your greatest, safest effort crushing that block. Just keep checking, do you still have your abdominals on that side? Are those ribs lifted up? Is the rib cage and pelvis stacked? And give me your best effort to crush that block. Immediately after your pails is your rails. It's an isometric as well, but it's this regressive tissue, istriocondylar adductor, and we are going to try to lift the knee into more adduction internal rotation without this pelvis moving. Nothing moves. Do you still have your abs on this side or your rib cage and pelvis still stacked nicely? Are you still breathing? Again, it's a 10 second effort. Greatest, safest effort. Trying to get the biggest distance here as is possible after 10 seconds. You can relax the knee back down and snug up that new range of motion. Not only have you added better tissue quality, but you have taught your brain. You have built cortical representation of that motion in your hip joint so that then you should be able to use it in life. One little bonus here that I'll mention is when you're in this position and you are pulling, trying to get yourself into that regressive tissue and into more AFIR internal rotation, you could push your foot down into the ground and lift your knee up to get glute max, which is going to be your shifter to get you over there. That is a magic combination. Your obliques on this side, a doctor pulling you over on this side, your glute max pushing you over on this side. Believe it or not, that is walking. That is running, hiking, pushing here, pulling here, fully committing to this side, and then getting off of it and doing it on the other side. Now you have a ton of other options to do exactly that same pails and rails. You could bring your leg down so the knee isn't in line with the hip, but a little lower, and then pop that block underneath it. You could come up into this low oblique sit. Just make sure you keep those ribs lifted. You can also use this more upright base position. Again, the knee is elevated, so you're in internal rotation. You can do a pure hip flexion to get into a more flexed position, bowing the stretch at the back, and apply your pails down into the block and your rails up off of the block. Couple of things with this. Number one, you never push through pinching, cramping, or pain. Number two, I do suggest you do this after you've done your PRI repositioning techniques. That'll reorganize your bones, get your joint on the axis so you really know what your rotation capacity is. And you can find lots of those in my YouTube PRI playlist. And number three, you've got to take this vertical if you want to make it stick. I have some really good one leg RDL modifications coming up if you want to follow along. I just want to reiterate how important these isometrics at end range are, your pails and your rails. Number one, isometrics are pain relieving and they are anti-inflammatory. Number two, end range strengthening is one of the best ways to get rid of tight muscle, that protective tension that people are always trying to stretch their way out of. You will never access that range if you don't get your brain to learn about it, control it, build that cortical representation so that it understands that joint 
and the range at the end of that joint. And then one of my favorite things, when you have tissue under tension and then you do an active isometric input to it, that is how the cells, the fibroblasts, learn how you want to reorganize that tissue. So if you want better organization of tissue, viscoelasticity, and just quality tissue, you want to get to that end range and apply your isometric.